Hey guys, GT Machine here. I haven't posted in a while, but uh, been doing some family stuff and uh, making fun of summer, vacation, all that good stuff. Uh, now I'm back at it again. I'm installing a pressure washer wall here. Um, getting tired of lugging everything around. It's just becoming a pain in the ass when I need to wash the wife's car, wash my car, or whatever. Um, now I'm just going to pull the reel out with the hose and then be good to go and make it cut down a lot of headaches. Um, I ordered uh, all my stuff uh, with COVID and everything. It took a while to get everything, but now I finally got the reel, which was waiting on the most part. Um, I got a, a Karcher uh, pressure washer, got off Amazon, uh, tore it all apart because I didn't want that whole big thing sitting on the, the shelf. It was too big and bulky and then I looked around for uh, other uh, smaller pressure washers and the, I don't really do it that much so it's I don't really need like an industrial size one and the cost I was trying to be on the uh, cheaper side of things so let's go ahead and uh, get it installed. I've done all the prep work as you can see. Um, now that my plywood here and here, I already painted it. Um, I already did a shelf, cut it up to where the pressure washer fits, as you'll see here soon. Got my reel all up. Uh, the hole's already pre drilled here, so we mounted up. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. I already have my shelf uh, pre-cut. Once you got the one bracket up there, uh, you don't really need to make it level. You just need to kind of get it close to where you you want your uh, shelf to sit. And then once you kind of got it up there, that's when you want to put your level on it so you can level the uh, level the shelf correctly and set up with the next bracket. Uh, it would help if I had screws so you put the next bracket up. So I wouldn't have problems. Once you get the first screw in there, that will pretty much hold itself up and then you can uh, push the bracket back. Get it bolted down good. You don't have to put all three screws in, but so the weight's not that much. So, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. And the shelf's nice and level. And I got some small screws to bolt the shelf down so it doesn't move.
Um, I was thinking about buying a stainless steel shelf for this, but I couldn't find one the right size, and then the cost of it, I just really, couldn't really justify it. Here's the pressure washer here. Here's what's inside the car tree. Tear it apart. It took me about maybe 20 minutes to get it all stripped down. Um, I made a bracket for it to sit on to support it, and then I uh, just used some uh, strip wire or strip plastic to uh, bolt it down to a support block so it doesn't move. I've already tested it, and it works out pretty good. And then some brackets to hold to the shelf. So we'll go ahead and uh, get it set up there. Right now I'm uh, pre-threading the holes just to make it easier to put the reel up. I look at taking the bracket off the reel, but it's too much of a pain in the ass. So hopefully I get two of these. Once I get two of these started, then I'll be good. So here's the reel. Uh, this is the 3/8 style inlet. Uh, holds 150 foot of hose. I'm only using 100, but it was the cheapest one I could find. I found it at MRO Supply for about 150 bucks. I had to wait about two months for it to ship, but it's finally here and I can get things mounted. This would definitely help if you had a friend available. start them and then snug it all the way up and then we'll get it leveled. But I kind of got the idea pretty much from Obsessed Garage and Matt Mormon. I kind of saw the numbers he was charging and I just really couldn't justify it. And I was like, there's got to be a better way, better way. So yeah, his stuff is really nice and it's one-stop shop where everything's right there and you buy it all and it's a whole kit and you don't have to do any of the work yourself except for the install but I figured I could put a little uh, elbow grease into it and source and figure it all out myself and I think I pretty much saved myself a few hundred dollars doing it this way It's pretty level itself right now, so. Go ahead and make it going down. All right, so that's pretty much the basic setup right there. Let's go ahead and uh, start running the hose and everything else. Those are the main two components and I got the rest. From uh, Amazon, it cost me about 
for the couple hoses I need and then the fittings. I would say about $100. The, the majority was the cost of the, 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 uh, the pressure washer fittings, the quick disconnects, and then the adapters. But uh, Pretty much everything's got quick disconnects, O-rings, everything except for the reel itself. So pretty much use these uh, 3 8 fittings here with a 3 8 MPT pipe thread and they screw right into the reel. So let's go ahead and get it installed. The one goes on the inside. You want to tighten it up so it doesn't, so it's tight and the pipe tape gets in there enough to where it seals the thread. So there's no leak. I actually got ahead of myself. I don't need the one thrown on one side because the quick disconnect hose I got comes with the right threads on the one end. Now we'll do the same thing. Let's get this screwed in here. No, this is going to be a little more of a pain in the butt because with the hose. All right, so it's pretty much basically in there. So now we can go ahead and uh, tighten it up. Grab a wrench and tighten the end up. Oh, I need a bigger wrench. Got it all snug down. And then it just connects right there, and then I'm going to tuck and zip tie the hose back here so it's not really too terribly in the way. Put it up inside on that disconnect. Make sure it's not loose. That'd be a bad deal. Then the reel comes with the reel kit to hold the hose down so you don't doesn't bend or anything so it comes out nice and pretty much nice and straight so you just slide the the peak clip over it
put it back in the hole and then get the nut started. And then tighten it back up here. And then you want to set the hose so there's no kinks, it doesn't pull on the fitting. So once we got that, we'll go ahead and start our wine. We can wind the hose up. It doesn't matter what way you want to start, you can go whatever way you want. stacking it so it's tight, there's no gaps and no real kinks in it. You may have to stretch out the end and kind of work out the, the, the nest in it because it might get kind of twisted and kinked up. at the end just loop it back up the top itself and just run the other way. it right there. I'll go ahead and uh, install the handle. That's pretty much it right there. There's the reel. And then uh, reset it here so you can see a little better. And then the break for the reels here, you can adjust the tension, whatever you want. Just screw it in to create more tension so the reel doesn't go out of control. And then if you want to really pull out, you just loosen it up and it pulls right out. Now. set up here, grab the end, and 
They tell you not to remove the tie but I don't care. It makes it look neater. When we install this. Go ahead and run the hose up there. Uh, I'm gonna get a, a, a Y splitter so I can run my main hose just for whatever, watering, whatever, and then this one runs the power washer. I'm just waiting on the Y splitter. But for now, we may do. I have my beer brewing buckets. So it's out of the way. All right, so pretty much there's a setup. Let's go ahead and uh, test it. Yeah. Put the hose in. Uh, you want to slowly turn your water on, so if you have leaks, you can shut it off quickly. want to watch everything make sure there's no leaks and then I got a bucket here I can spray into to test it and then purge the air out of the line Doesn't not seeing any leaks. All right, so the pressure button for, for this one is pretty much it. It would be bound to a pedal if you're having the, uh, the actual stand up thing, but being I wanted to be, uh, find a cheap way to do this, I just disassembled the whole thing and use that. So, here, let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. So, I went ahead and pressurized the, the hose on the pressure side. Ran it up to the pressure to where it automatically kicks off. Let's go ahead and inspect again for leaks. Make sure we don't have any. Feel around the two joints and everything you mounted. I'm trying to look inside the reel. It's hard to see in there with the hose on there. but I'm not seeing any leaks. And I just want to leave it for a minute, make sure uh, the biggest big sign, telltale sign, if you can't see the leak, you do have a leak, the pressure will kick back, will decrease, and then the automatic kick on will kick the pressure washer back on again. So we'll just leave it for a minute, just to make sure there's no leaks. And pretty much it. Now instead of lugging your pressure washer out and hooking all the connections up, plugging in power, gotta get a power adapter, because now you can't just plug the, this beefy end into your outside power because they make the whole outside box to where it just doesn't fit in there and you got to get a power strip or extension cord now pretty much all i do is uh hook, the, hook my hose up to it turn it on turn the water on like you turn in the asphalt and you're ready to go pretty much it can't be simpler uh pretty much the whole thing probably cost me 
Uh, paid 120 for the uh, pressure washer, um, 150 for the reel, and about a little over 100 bucks and uh, for the fittings and then some odds and end nonsense. So, and then I've already had the hose, but if you had to buy a hose, usually typically for about 100 feet, about 60 bucks or so. So probably instead of buying a thousand dollar setup from uh, Obsessed Garage, you can pretty much source yourself. I'll post most of the links uh, in the description where I found everything, but pretty much everything came from Amazon except for the reel. I didn't want to pay the price for the, what Amazon was charging for the reel. So I bought it from a different spot, just a little quick Google search and found it cheaper elsewhere. Had to wait for it, of course, but sometimes it's worth waiting when you're saving a decent amount of money. Um, I, sometimes I can't wait, I'll get a little uh, impatient, but what are you gonna do? So pretty much all in all, it's probably, the whole setup was about under $500. And sure, I could have got a nicer setup and it looks a little more professional and you don't see the pressure washer look like this, but hey, I could save the money here and then with the money saved on this versus a more professional setup, I could spend it elsewhere, more mods on the car or whatever. All right, guys, thanks for watching GT Machine. Uh, hopefully you like the pressure washer setup to where maybe you can do it yourself, but I think it definitely gonna help me down the road. Thanks for watching it.